Hey guys, it's late muzzleloader season. Today we're out doing a little bit of wind bumping. Greg's got the muzzleloader here. But we're gonna show you a hunt from a couple days ago, back in the second season, where Jake, Ted, Keith, and I went into an area that we had scouted last winter. We had an idea of what the deer were doing back in that area a little bit, but you know, water levels had changed and we weren't allowed to be in that area until you know that day or a couple days before that. So we hadn't been back there to check the spot out. So our main mission was just to sneak in, do a little bit of still hunting, try to figure it out, and we ended up bumping into a lot of deer. So hope you enjoy the episode. These guys are all on the same team. Those guys are plotting something. Oh yeah. I don't know, Ted. I don't think it's good. I think everything's ruined at this point. We ought to back out once quick. Should we head back to McDonald's and see what we can get into there? Yeah, we better. I was actually just gonna say though, like I wish we would've bumped some deer out of this because it would've gave me a lot more confidence going back in here. So I think that's a good sign that there's deer in this little finger because this whole ridge is just like mass scale of that. But now that we know that there's deer in this little pocket, I think once we get up to this edge of this woods here, we're just gonna move slow. Maybe only make it another 200 yards the rest of the night because I think deer could definitely be bedded here. And I don't know what is in the field up top, but last year when I scouted this spot, it was standing corn up there. And the deer were just piling out of that bottom, coming up to the top to feed at night. But this year, I think they might be right up in the timber just because it is so wet. So we're gonna approach it that way, hunt the timber tonight, and hopefully get up to this corner where I think they're gonna be coming into the field. And if they're coming out of the bottom, they're gonna come up right in front of us. So don't have a lot of time to hunt tonight, but hopefully we're gonna run into a bunch of deer be able to adjust tomorrow if need be, but I think we definitely have a chance if we can make it to this corner by this afternoon too. So we're gonna start moving real slow here. Doe standing right on the hill. See those guys, the deer's just a lot. Yeah, I see it. I'm feeling really good that there's that many deer up in the CRP. Pretty good sized bed. <laughs> bed here and look all the way out over that brown grass. Here he is. Where'd he go? Did he cross? I didn't see it. Here's a really big buck. He's a big buck coming. He's about to cross. You see him coming. Get up a little bit and get his antlers coming. It might be too far into the grass. He's coming right towards the trail. Okay. He might just be a little too far. I can't see through that grass. He's coming. There's another bucks behind him. There's more bucks.
still see him. Is he looking at us? No, he's walking away. Okay. There's something on our left. This is a huge one. He, get up real quick. He's down there. Just let me know what he's doing. I can shoot that. I think. Am I making too much noise? Yeah. Can you get that tripod out? There's those guys right there down the bottom. fiasco we've been trying to make a plan here and we basically just walked right up on top of the hill and instantly we heard deer up in this timber and they came right up and across this little bit of a saddle here they went down in this brown grass and kind of disappeared and we're just standing in this open stuff but the grass is tall enough around us that they can't see us we stood up and looked back to our south right past jake and ted and there's a tank down there with a bunch of does. He went back down to the right, so we're kind of thinking about dropping back down. Our wind is still good for that. Those deer might even see Jake and Ted down there, so they might be bailing back this way. We may have to drop down and get in front of them. Somebody's running dogs down that bottom. I just heard a heel. Might have just pushed those deer right over the ridge in front of us, because we could hear them feeding in those pin oaks when we came up. And then that guy just yelled down there, and they ran over the top. They're real confused. Did you see that buck over there? I see him. I don't know if that big one's over there still or not. Yeah, it's only that small. Hold on a sec, hold on. Doe. There's a buck down the bottom. Good buck down the bottom. Good buck down the bottom. Hey, we need to move. We need to move right now. There's a, that big buck's down that bottom. That big buck's right down in there. Zoom in there from just by that doe. Okay, move down into the right a little bit and you'll have it. His antlers are just sticking up. Okay, let's crawl. I can them are right there. And it looks like they see a deer. So Ted and I are just going to move up to the top of the hill here so we can see a little bit better. There was deer right here. And they're looking over here, so I'd imagine there's more up here. It's crazy back in here. Oh my god, he's huge. Just blew this up. That thing was giant, Keith. Oh, yeah. Gosh dang it, dude. Big buck. Hey. Up on the ground. Yeah. 
stuff. I'm on that one going across the ice. So I was thinking, like, I'm really shaking. That's one thing I'll say, though, is if you hear deer running like that, like, you can definitely run. Right. Because, like, as much yeah. noise as they're making. Because they can't hear you. Know, and, like, we could have sat there and listened to him, but we ran down here, and, like, I could have shot him there if you were on him. I mean, yeah. I understand why you weren't, but I could have if we were just not doing this stuff. Yeah. Now it's a big one. Oh, yeah, he's wild. <laughs> Ted and I were just getting up to this timber. We were really taking our time. Just because we thought there was, or we're hoping there was going to be deer up here like last year. And there was. <laughs> that was a big one. Did you, did you film him running across that ice? I think so. <laughs> that was pretty I'm funny. Pretty sure. His legs were just like going out. Yeah. He stopped right on the edge there twice. Had we not been filming, I would have shot at him for sure. I mean, he's 150 yards to that edge probably. And I can for sure shoot that far with this thing, I think. <sighs> I'm still shaking a little bit. <laughs> that was the first excitement I've had in an Iowa gun season. And he was big. <laughs> that's more than, more than what I'm looking for there. And that's kind of what I was telling you right before that. I was like, we got to slow down here because they might be right here. I'm guessing that, oh, dear. Yeah, you're right. He sees us. Huh? He's looking at us, Jake. The big one steps up there, I'm not sure. Big one. Another one coming, Ted. Decent buck. Shoot her? I might. Do it now, he's not gonna stop. Dang. If he stops up there, I might shoot that one. Struggling to get across that ice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> pretty nice buck. That's a pretty big antler, two year old, little thing. What's that? It's a Wide. hard to explain what has just happened. I think that guy down there running dogs for birds bumped these deer and they ran over top of the hill and it just kind of scattered them out in this field. And we just happened to time it right coming up here. And that big buck got down in that grass. And I saw the doe and I knew she could see me or the fawn. But I just kept going for it and I got in range of the, of the doe. And he was somewhere in that tall grass but I could not see his body. And we saw his antlers up there, but lost him once we moved up. I just could not see him. I think we've just really got the deer confused and they've got us confu confused. I don't think we have a lot of time at this point. I mean, that all just happened as we were going in. Yeah. So, found 15 minutes left. That, that's a bummer there. We should have killed that buck. 
you know, honestly, if we would have just went down and just set up to overlook the CRP, we might have got a chance when he was over on that little ridge. And I thought about it, because it's like right when we found that bed, I thought about just moving right down from there to be able to shoot down into that hillside across that saddle. But then I saw that there's no crops here and I panicked. It was the dumbest thing to think about. All right, well, it's a pretty fun afternoon. We definitely know there's a lot of bucks in here where we were kind of hoping they would be. There was one big one in that back corner that I wanted to go to right off the bat. And last year, just based off all the sheds that we found and stuff like that, deer were definitely wintering here. But a lot has changed since last year. That field up top is no longer an egg field. It was a corn field up top last year, and that's part of the reason the deer were feeding there so heavy. And another thing that's really changed is that whole bottom down there is all underwater now. So I don't know how far away from this field they're actually bedding. It seemed like a lot of them were right up in this CRP and around this hardwood ridge. So I don't know the nature that they were spooked. I guess we'll have to talk to Zach. But it looks kind of like the buck was just running with all the does. So maybe a doe or something got their wind or saw him. And then the buck just followed off and doesn't really know what happened. And it looked like they were slowing down when we last saw him. They might have just stayed right in that cover all night. So. We'll be back somewhere in this area tomorrow. At least Ted and I will be. I don't know what Zach and Keith's plan is, but this is where I plan on hanging out for a couple of days probably. So I'm not mad at Ted, but I, cause I know how hard it is to get on him fast with the camera. He can only zoom so fast, but there was a lot of footage that he didn't get based off what I saw. I think he missed both times the deer stopped. So it feels good to be within range of a buck. That was the first time during Iowa's gun season that I've done that. So. Hopefully tomorrow we can pull the trigger out. It's pretty close tonight. We'll see you tomorrow.